This is Twit. This is I we we talked a little bit of this about about this last week and the potential. You know, the tension the core i7 stuff, this is looking really good. Um you know, you guys went out, or I, you know, the, the, the isolate graphics are, are up to twice as fast. I should just stop speaking and be like, so Jim, were they twice as fast? Um. <laughs> yeah, uh, in, in certain areas, yes, this is a, a tremendous increase. And, and let's be clear what we're talking about here. So this is isolate. This is right. Intel's first widely available 10 nanometer part, long delayed, controversial. It was just a, a a struggle to get this thing to the market, and they finally did it. The first systems uh, started launching at the beginning of this month. And in the lead up to this, they were touting this new Gen 11 graphics. They've been talking about this since last fall or last last winter. So it's been a while. And right. they were saying, you know, this is a new graphics architecture. Uh, it's it's a uh, uh, a whole new uh, or a whole new level of performance because in integrated graphics on Intel processors have always been, uh, inferior to AMD, they're 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 adequate for your notebook. They're at, you know, but you're not going to be gaming very well. You're you're not going to be doing any any advanced video encoding using the you know, <laughs> using GP compute. They're wonderful for displaying spreadsheets on your ultra portable. Uh, yeah, you know, gaming. You know, as long as you don't get any closer than maybe five years ago, if you expect anything that resembles decent performance, you're good to go. Um, I'm being a little harsh there, but not super harsh. This is this was. Oh. I mean, we also should point out their numbers. They're talking about two X of not the last generation, but the generation before that, right? Gen nine versus Gen eleven, not Gen eleven versus well, Gen ten. Gen ten didn't exist technically, so uh, they, this well, is tech, so so Gen ten was going to be a Cannon Lake uh, thing, and Cannon Lake was Intel's right. first attempt to get the ten nanometers that that fizzled out. There was one very limited release part that came out without without uh, these level of graphics on them. So so Gen 10, for all intents and purposes, doesn't exist in the market. So, okay. so this is, you know, a, a, from a market perspective, a single generation uh, leap. And they're comparing Whiskey Lake, which was the 15-watt TDP top-end part last year, mm -hmm. which was UHD 620, to now Ice Lake, which is their, their top-end. And they distinguish their graphics now. They call it Iris Plus graphics. And there's various levels of that. There's the G7 at the top-end, which is what we tested. And then there's the G4 and the G1. And the short answer is yes. We didn't match their exact numbers that you just saw on that little chart. Uh, but but overall, we found that it is, it's anywhere from 50 to 100% faster. From gaming to um, rendering, anything that was GPU related is significantly faster on Ice Lake. And that's important because we, we also threw into this article the Picasso system, which is Ryzen 3000 mobile, Zen Plus, not Zen 2 like it is on desktop, which is their their current system in the market. And if you look at, uh, so here, if you look at the, the gray bar and the orange bar, take the blue bar out of the middle, that was the state of the market up until August 31st, up until Ice Lake right. launched. And Ryzen was beating the pants off of Intel in most GPU-related things. And now here comes that blue bar in the middle, here's Ice Lake, and it either it meets or exceeds Ryzen in most things. It, it, it doesn't beat Ryzen in everything, but even where it doesn't beat it, it comes close. And so that's that's a, a, a huge win. These aren't gaming laptops. These aren't uh, video production workstations. These are your Ultrabooks. But what it means is you can now take your Ultrabook that you might have for work or school, and you can go to, uh, you know, go on a trip or, or go to the office. And if you've got a you know, few minutes, you can fire up uh, Fortnite or... Uh, Starcraft or whatever, and you're going to get acceptable frame rates at 1080p, you know, between 30 and 60 FPS, uh, even higher on some older games. So it's it's a great uh, a great advancement for Intel. The problem though is availability. Ice Lake mm -hmm. has has launched. They've announced like a dozen systems. The only one we've been able to find, and we were able to buy it. That's how we did this. Was the Dell XPS 13 two in one. Uh, every other system from every other manufacturer ha is still pending. You know, they they've listed it on their website, but you can't order it. There's no ship date. Uh, there were rumors ahead of this that yields were very low. So we don't know if that's going to play a part. Uh, and the price is high. You know, these are not going to be your cheap systems. The system we tested was about $1,800. Uh, and it wasn't a fully loaded system. It had the top-end processor, but it was 512 storage. You know, it wasn't a crazy uh, system. So you're not going to find these on your on your budget builds anytime soon, or your budget laptops anytime soon. Right. And, uh, and then the other... I just want to point out with laptop testing, as always, 
you can't control for everything because you, you have a closed system basically. And so these laptops right. we tested, they're, they're different form factors, different thermal uh, constraints. So this is all we had, that's why we did it because we couldn't find any other ice lake systems. But as more come, <laughs> we may see different performance characteristics, either more either more uh, constrained or, or on a system that has more thermal headroom, maybe even better performance there as well. So, so you're probably not going to get an ice lake system soon. You know, it's going to take a little while for this stuff to right. get out there and we'll see how the prices and availability kind of settle. I'll be really curious to see, given how miserable the, the cooling performance has been on some of the laptops, or I should say some of the ultra portables in the last couple of years, I'll be very curious to see what real world experiences are like. Um, I mean, that said, I'm also looking at like Fortnite, 1080p, you know, uh, uh, you know, setting it low. Um, you know, you're talking about going from 31 frames per second to 50 frames per second as an average frame rate. That's uh, that's a pretty huge bump. <laughs> um, yeah, and know, frame times too were, were significantly yeah. improved, and that's important for that smooth gameplay um, because a lot of these games like Fortnite and Overwatch, you know, you can you can very quickly go from a low low complex scene where it's running fine to then something blows up and you're looking at a slideshow. And so stable frame times are, are just as important as frame rates. And we saw improvements there as well.